guy. Wisconsin, baby. Oh, there we go. There's some cheese heads back there. I believe that that's what, what they call them. Yes, it Let's is. Let's talk about this game, Suns fan. Oh, my God. Our challenger here has missed of a burnus yep. first round. Talk to me about why that's so good, buddy. It's so good because it modifies everybody in your lane at the beginning of the round with one damage. And getting it that early means that's that's an extra damage you're going to get every single round. That's correct. It's permanent, guys. So every single round, that mist of a burnus can go in any lane that you want, and it will buff those heroes and creeps with plus one attack. I know it doesn't sound good, but when it's been in there for three, four rounds, those guys are hitting like a truck. He's going to put in lane three. I, I disagree. I think it does sound good. <laughs> it sounds really good. Well, to an average player, plus no, one know. damage. They, they've seen enough of this to know. And, and it's on a Rick's lane, so he'll be coming back every time. Doesn't matter if he dies right away. He gets four damage to start with, which means he'll kill creeps. So it, it's pretty powerful. Now you might be wondering to yourself, how come he didn't play anything in lane two, our Lumi champion? Well, there wasn't a colored hero that could have played anything in that one. No blue hero means you can't play a blue spell in that lane. That's why hero placement is so important. We do see Lumi with a lot of very good early game cards. Cunning plan, only two mana. He can use that whenever he wants. We got a lot of good stuff there and a very nice card right here for later in the game. Oh, who that, Suns fan? That's Debbie. That's Debbie. Question is, where does she go? So she does an extra two damage to to heroes and towers, but she's very squishy, my friend. Only five HP. Only five HP. She's working the knife. She does know how to work. That's her passive skill, by the way. It's your one. <laughs> Please don't look at me and say. She's working the knife. Shut up. <laughs> We're gonna get fired before the first official event, you idiot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right. Debbie is working the knife in the top uh, lane here, or the first lane. First lane, yeah. Sorry, Dota terminology. As you can see here, getting buffed up by Lycan. Lycan's passive ability is anybody standing to the left or right of him gets plus two damage. So uh, not too bad there to uh, help her out. She's a real heavy hitter. I'm not sure anyone would survive, oh, but she's going to die. Yeah, clear the deck, a four mana Ooh. red card. Gives heroes four cleave for that round only, and that's enough to kill our poor... Debbie. Debbie, you got to take care of her. She's a sweet girl. She is a sweet girl, but not going to live through the night, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> She's going to meet her untim untimely demise right now. Yeah. Uh, now this, just to keep in mind, this deck that the challenger is playing is the gold deck, we'll call it. It's the econ ramp. Ah, yeah. You want to get as much gold as possible because there's there's many different cards in this deck that can actually help you out with that. So one of which is in your hand right now, which is the Reptile Convoy. Yep. It dynamically changes attack based on your half of your current gold. So it'll go up and down based on how much you have. Of course, not a whole lot right now, and you can't play it anyway because it is five mana. Right. But and there, you've seen some bigger. You saw the Thunder High pack games, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Gold is very important in this game. For you guys wondering at home, what exactly does gold do and why is it good? Well, it buys you items. And items, just like in the game of Dota, uh, exponentially increase the skills and abilities of your hero. Some of the items, the level 25 gold items, can drastically change or even win you the game. So right now we're in this last lane here. Rix is going to die, but don't forget he's got Relentless Rebel. He can come back next round, and we're probably going to see our boy put the Savage Wolf down. Oh, I love casting Artifact. Oh, I sound yeah. so smart. This is the only game it's I could be Literally the only in. card he could have played. Why, <laughs> why don't you ever let me have anything? <laughs> well, Cunning Plan is used now Ooh. to swap places with the Wolf Ooh. and Rix. Now you might be wondering, why do that? Lumi knows that Rix is just going to come back if he dies. It's not a high value kill, but by swapping them out with Cunning Plan, which moves those two heroes, he's able to kill that Savage Wolf. Savage Wolf, he gets plus two attack, plus two health right. every round that he lives, and he ain't living past Lumi. So in a normal game, yes. So Savage Wolf is very scary. Yes. Every round it gets a lot of HP and a little bit of damage. Sure. But Rix is... He's gaining damage every round, too. He's going to turn into a real hero here pretty soon. Boy, yeah, yeah. Rix is uh, not the strongest card because of that uh, Relentless Rebel. But with that added damage coming in from Mr. Vavernus, he's going to get pretty scary. You are correct. Right. Oh, that is unfortunate. <laughs> Chen, you poor soul. Well, he'll, he'll live with one HP if nothing else is done here. Yep. Of course, this could be a good opportunity to play the Selmanis Favor in another lane. Sure. Selmanis Favor is a tower improvement. It gives you a tower plus two mana. It doesn't sound like a big deal. Why do you keep saying that? Because people one that and does, two are That not, sounds amazing. It what doesn't sound amazing. About? Plus two? Yes, that's about? huge. That guy likes plus two. <laughs> All right. Well, for me, two is Let's not Let's just a say that about everything. That doesn't sound that good, but trust me, it's great. Yeah, it makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. Look at there that. That's is. why I used it. It didn't sound that good, but he used it. <laughs> 
All right, here we go. Well, the fact that he used it on that lane means, of course, you have to think ahead in this game because there are three boards. Yep. Steam Cannon, it will be available to be used, which is an improvement that if you guys saw the game against me, the guy had three freaking Steam Cannons I don't, against him. How do you lose oh, a game lord. with three Steam Cannons? My <laughs> lord. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, so we're going to see that Chen take a lot of damage there because of that random uh, arrow that pointed his way. But look at that seven mana. Now, I know it doesn't seem that good, but Steam <laughs> Cannon is one of the best cards in the game. You can put it in this lane now, and it will do four damage. That's pretty huge, Sunspan. Or piercing damage, Piercing, you. And it's forever. But he could take the chance to do a coup de gras, and he is going to do that. Oh, indeed. boy. All right, well, he loses. What did he lose? He lo he lost a uh, big one, Chen's card. Whole, uh, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called. The seven mana one. That's correct. Hand uh, of God. Hand of God, which makes everybody invincible in one lane and heals them right. to full HP. So out of all the cards he had, uh, it wasn't actually that bad. I, I think mean, that's actually the best card to lose. Yeah, Reptile Convoy, right. you definitely want to keep that one. So This could be a good lane to put down the Reptile Convoy. Of course, it's the only one you can put down. Sure. Uh, but of course, keep in mind, Mist of Avernus has continued doing work. Rick started with three attack. Oh, he now yeah. has six permanently. He's a big boy now. He used to be a little pup. He's grown into a man. All right, there it is. Three. So as you can see, it takes half. Uh, the attack turns half into your uh, dynamically your gold. So whoa. Now you have to think about whether you want to spend your gold. That's true. Well, why? He got Mist of Avernus anyway. He's just gonna keep getting bigger. Why spend any? Why save up, Suns fan? Because. Oh, like right now, in yeah. this scenario. If sure. you need a healing salve, take it. If not, don't bother buying anything, because nothing else is going to really help you right now. Yeah, you can get a, a whole nother three damage. I know it doesn't sound that great, but three <laughs> damage. <laughs> is that your calling card now? <laughs> <laughs> Until people are actually good at this game, and I'm not allowed to be an analyst anymore, <laughs> I'm going to try to keep this as complicated sounding as possible, so I can keep my job. All right, anyway. this one, okay, this one yes. I will actually say, it doesn't sound that good, but it really is. Okay, what is it? And I'm not memeing, it's yeah. Stonehall Plague. You talked about how anything Stonehall related is really good. Yeah, that's right. And it's true. This one will give you two armor initially, and then every round after, one extra armor. And it just keeps going over and over and over. So yep. late game, it's super good if you've had it on for a while. Now you guys might be wondering, okay, how do I know if it's going to get to late game? It's actually a good way to figure that kind of stuff out is by looking at your opponent's cards. Blue cards extremely weak in the early game, but they're looking for that late game. A good way to counter something like that is with items like Stonehall Plate, items like Mist of Avernus, where the late game is also good for you too. Typically, you're going to ramp off in those seven, eight, nine mana rounds, but uh, by buying these items that continuously give you stats, you can survive down there, and uh, it's pretty good. So here we go. He's going to commit both of his heroes to lane one, Sunzi. That's not good. We got the conflagrations right here. Conflagration. That's good. It's, he's going to get conflagrated. Yeah, it's going to kill off Chen. And I mean, Debbie, only three HP left. Oh, Debs. She's really hurting right now. Not good. Of course, armor is, I think I said Stonehall Plate gives you two armor, but it's actually one. My mistake. One is armor oh. plus one every round. So armor is really good against conflagration because it's not piercing. And there you go. As you see right there, she's going to get one armor right now. As soon as the combat phase is over, she'll be awarded with one more armor. But my boy, Keith the Bold, getting himself a Traveler's Cloak. It's going to give him a little bit of mana right there. And he's going to get cut in half. All right. Well, that, that did cost him quite a bit, though, because he did lose the Steam Cannon. Oh, which is no. We've been talking about. <laughs> So that could potentially hurt. I mean, only time will tell if that's actually the case or not. I will say, though, Payday is a card you definitely don't want to lose. Uh, doubling your gold in any moment in this day. Oh, oh, no. That's four charges. Might not Ooh. get it. And PA Ooh. lives. Well, no. And dies. <laughs> <laughs> For Static Field from Zeus, deal one piercing damage to enemy neighbors. Yep. Anytime a blue spell is cast. Things are so looking, can't be cast. looking too good for our challenger here. He is, oh, however, only getting dealt five damage. As we told you guys before, these blue decks just don't do a lot of direct damage. Uh, they do get stronger with their spells as the game goes on, and you usually see that big moment at level seven, which we are very closely getting to. Here we got Rix again. He's only got one HP Earthshaker. There's a lot of different things that uh, Lumi can do. So we'll see. I'm guessing he's going to be hitting that power that uh, tower barrage, but he could put one of these beautiful conflagrations, <laughs> conflagration, in a different lane. So that definitely gets rid of Rix's attack on the tower, but Earthshaker still will die to the Reptile convoy. Oh. And then Phase Boots comes in nice. for HP. 
Face Very Boots nice. not only gives you 4 HP, but it also has an active ability allowing you to swap positions with an ally. When there's no allies, of course you can't do that. But as a general rule of thumb there, guys in the line, before you hit that gold button... It doesn't sound that good, but it's no, great. No, it's great. Before you hit that gold button, look and see if there's anything glowing on your screen. That means you can click it. Yes. I've seen too many steam cannons today never launch, too many active abilities not used, so make sure to scan your cards and see if there's anything glowing. Now, from Lumi's perspective, of course, he's playing the control deck. He's actually in very good position. Absolutely. The one tower that's taken a heavy beating is mid, and or the second lane, and I think he has that under control quite a bit with two blue heroes there. Yep. Shouldn't have any issue taking out Ricks. It's a pretty deadly combo having a Zeus and a Luna. Luna, when they come in the lane, is going to activate Lucent Beam and already do one damage. Then Zeus, if he casts anything, he does another damage, and that damage adds up. But we're finally seeing the strength of the green deck, the Thunderhide pack. So notice how the two armor completely blocked conflagration of the what? Of doing any damage. Now it doesn't sound Super that good. great. <laughs> but it... armor doesn't sound that great. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does. All right, Sunspan, what's the play here? We got Hand of God, which would give him full immunity on this Lycan and bring him back, but it would waste all of his mana. He could TP away with a town portal scroll. When you TP back, uh, you're ready to redeploy in the next phase, and uh, you're good to go again and all healed up. But we could be seeing something else. What would you suggest here, buddy? I mean, it's a tough call because this mid lane, you need to decide what lane nice. you're going to be holding. And it looks like this is the choice for him. Yeah. So mid lane, may, or the second lane, maybe not going to do anything here. Interesting right. choice. I guess he wants to block that damage coming out from Dibs. Uh, she does do that additional damage, and why not sacrifice your Red Mist Pillager? and uh, get him to take a, take that arrow for the team. Yep, and of course, keep in mind that Lumi will, all his towers have less HP, so he wants to block as much damage as possible. So That's it doesn't really matter point. if it expends a unit that could potentially do damage later. Okay, There's here we go. Damage. We got the Thunder Hide pack. Now you might be saying, why play this card now? This is great. It's got siege damage. Siege damage, if you miss that, goes through heroes and it does damage to a tower and boom shakalaka! Not only will he be killing the Luna, he will be dealing damage to that tower, as you can see right here on the indicator. Minus six, Thunderhide pack, sieging right through that girl. My power is not so for the control deck, one of the biggest weaknesses is taking out large creeps. And yes. this is a this is as large as they get. Oh yeah. This is a big, big boy. Oh yeah. This looks like you and me running to uh, get some pizza. Which one am I? I think you're the angriest one on the front. <laughs> And I'm more of this guy in the back that That's has That's a baby. You're not a baby. I'm a baby. Look at my baby face. Well, Zeus and Luna <laughs> are in a lot of trouble here. We're just going to pretend that didn't happen. So <laughs> the beauty of the Thunder High pack is he's doing six damage, like you said, with Siege. Next turn, he's going to be able to kill it. Yep. It doesn't matter that Luna or that Lumi cast the Ventriloquy. Obviously, it's going to keep Zeus alive, so he could cast something next turn to help out another lane. But this lane is done. Lumi yeah. is going to be giving up in this lane for all intents and purposes. He really should. Now, let's see how good our opponent is. That was a good point. You might be saying, why not use your town portal scroll? Get that guy out of there so you don't feed him gold. Well, that's Rix. He'll be back next round, so don't use that TP. Let him die. You'll see him anyway. And we're ready to get, let this tower go. Oh, the Maul, though. More siege damage here coming out. So uh, he's going to go right through Rix and hit that tower with that plus five siege. So next turn, that tower is dead one way or the other. I don't know if Lumi can actually do anything about uh, turning that around and dealing 27 damage. His deck doesn't really offer that kind of that power. Yep. So Lumi needs to decide, and I think he already has the first and third lane are probably his priorities. Now in this lane, enough. you'll notice that our challenger isn't doing much. Again, hero placement is king in this game, and there's no hero in this lane means he can't do anything. He simply must sit there and watch while Lumi does whatever he wants and takes complete control. He's going to move out the Earthshaker in this lane, an interesting choice, because he just wants him to get healed up, and we're back. Remember, he has Fissure up now. It he takes does. four rounds to come off cooldown. It is off cooldown now. He didn't use it there because the Reptile Convoy was getting blocked by that creep, and the heal was most likely mostly, or the, the TP was mostly for healing purposes, but you obviously could deploy him to a different lane, but he's going to have to go for lane one and three, I assume. Mm -hmm. Now, this is going to be a huge move here by our challenger. Three heroes are coming out in this lane for all intents and purposes. Uh, this will probably decide the direction that this is, entire game is going to go. Yes, that is true. This round will probably decide it one way or the other. Yeah. So we will find out what he values most. Sunspan, what are you thinking? We got two heroes coming out for Lumi and three coming out for our challenger. Well, the challenger should not put anything mid. 
I think that's pretty much. Uh, <laughs> that's a... I've, I've decided on that. The Whoa. Thunder High Pack is going to kill it regardless. No, nah, I don't think so, Suns fan. Check out uh, if he puts Earthshaker mid with the Fissure, he could stun the pack and then okay. they can't do anything. That's a good point. But the question is, does Lumi actually want to do that? Like, is it is it worth saving this for one round? No. But it could. It happen. could be. Uh, what is, what's in that head right now? Yeah, it looks like our challenger is going to go ahead and put Chen in the first lane. It makes a little bit of sense. His uh, Holy Persuasion is up now, which allows him to grab a creep. So probably just going to see if he can't do a lot of damage to that. Um, and here we go. Not, wow. Oh, All right. that's an unlucky arrow in lane three. That is unfortunate. Well, Lumi's doing exactly what you said. So this is a very risky play, but could have huge benefits for him. Mm -hmm. Putting all the heroes mid, essentially. Uh, Second lane. I keep saying mid. I am. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, in this first lane, this top lane, if you will, <laughs> yes. uh, we're seeing these heroes. Uh, Holy Persuasion is online, but you don't really want to grab a creep. You want to wait until something better is on the field. Our buddy here doesn't know that nothing else could be on the field, though. So might be a good time to use that bad boy. Or, you know, he could also use Hand of God as well. This costs no mana to use Holy Persuasion. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what he feels like he wants to do. So Luckily for him, no damage on the tower. Right. Something to keep in mind, if he does cast Hand of God, the immunity is only for this round, but it's a round, right? So second lane, if Lumi casts, like, Thunder, uh, Thunder God's Wrath or something like that, it's not going to affect his heroes in this first lane because they're still invulnerable to damage. Yep. It's for the entire round. So oh, that's going to do that. What do you think about that decision? Worth it? I mean, I think so. the Lycan lives, but who cares? Well, like I literally just said, <laughs> casting Thunder God's <laughs> Wrath won't do anything to those heroes. That is true. That is true. So it looks like Lumi got exactly where he wanted to go, and he is going to Fissure, making sure that that four damage is not taken. We'll see if that was a good move as time of okay. triumph. But let's talk about that card, Sunspan. Eight. Exact damage lethal on this tower. He, he did the math before. He did the math. He's a smart boy. Plus four attack, plus four armor, plus four health, plus four cleave, retaliate, siege. This is a big boy card, but it does cost eight mana. So uh, if a red deck, if you haven't already won, you want to probably have a time of triumph yeah, so in there. Typically speaking, red decks are very strong early, yeah. and they fall off late. But this is the card that if you get it in a timely manner like this, very powerful, because not only do you change the heroes in that manner, but they're modified forever. They're always going to be that strong. And as we saw, Cleave has a huge impact on these games. Uh, woo, very unlucky arrow right here. Six damage would be great for him right now. And uh, unfortunately, yes. pointing to that creep, it's blocking over seven plus six damage. Yeah, that is... Which is a... That is unfortunate. I can't even fathom that number. So keep in mind, something like Iron Fog Goldmine, which obviously, you know, it's getting to the later stage of the game. Three gold is not going to help that much. But it does provide extra damage for this Reptil Convoy that is there for the yeah. next following round. He has and not he used his payday, well. which he yeah. could have used a lot this game, but he never really got to those big kind of number things. And see, what was that? Oh, Whew, okay, he is going to use that. I thought he was surrendering. That was <laughs> you can still do it, my friend. I think now you use the payday. I mean, what is an untested grunt going to do here? You could get Nothing. lucky with a nice item. Well, untested grunt just dies to the conflagration next round, so it essentially just does four damage this round, right? So I don't know if that's worth it. It could be. It's tough to say because you have to think so far ahead in these games. But I think Payday is definitely the safer choice because you're providing extra damage, at least for the following round. But here's the thing, like, I don't know if you spend your gold now. You need to look at the lane situation and you might as you well, prioritize. You might as well put Untested Grunt you down might, here anyway. I mean, it, the question is, do you want to do four damage to this tower or do you want to keep Untested Grunt to block something? Huh. Right? It's a good question. Do you need to block something? Maybe not. Yep. Yeah. Could happen. I mean, that middle lane ain't looking good, but as we said before, uh, he has to do 80 damage to take that bad boy out, and right. it ain't too bad. I so. think that's that's a good choice there not to use it, because you can still use this falling around. Yeah. And it's always good to have that plus one. Uh, actually, Luna's going to be in this third lane, isn't she? Uh-oh. Now, what he could have done before he passed on that one is to use that Town Portal Scroll. He could have sent the PA home, healing yes. her up all the way, and then just redeployed her into that third lane, which maybe would have made a difference, especially if she only has four HP, meaning any blue hero that does a Thunder God's Wrath is going to be able to take her out now. So kind of uh, risky to leave her in there, but we'll see if Lumi wants to go right. that route in lane two. So I initiative is on... Lumi's side. We'll see if he chooses to pass this first couple lanes or not. I mean, can't really do anything in round uh, lane two anyway, so might as well just use everything that you can, Sunspan. All right, so we're getting down to this late game scenario here. Debbie, my girl, working that knife <laughs> in lane one. 
Gonna be hitting that tower for 13, along with some creeps here. Unfortunate arrow yet again on this middle creep. Four damage. 17 instead of 19 would have been a big deal. However, he does have two no accidents. He could theoretically double it up on that creep and do lethal damage here by combining it with that untested grunt, Sunspan. He could. Or he I mean, could do he a could poaching just, knife. I mean, there's a pretty good chance. No heroes are coming back next round for Lumi, yeah. if any of them die. Bristleback is going to be alone in this lane. So do you think you can do six damage next turn? Oh, yeah. So then you probably don't do anything right now. What are you talking about? If you want to save initiative. Ah, well, initiative. How is initiative going to help him in the last lane? He doesn't have anything to deal with. Whatever's happening in the last lane is happening in the last lane. He's got so nothing to deal it with. It depends. I mean, it's easy for us to say because we know what Lumi's cards are, right? Like, if you're talking about just any, like, let's say ah. it's an Eclipse in this last lane, you can play an untested Grunt to soak up one of those Lucid That's beams. true. If it's an Echo Slam, then that's actually worse playing that year. That is right? true. There's no way to know for sure. Which is the beauty of this game, Slax. Indeed. It is now a keep, mysterious game. Keep in mind yeah. that he did spend a bunch of his gold. He only has four gold right now, mm -hmm. which means the Reptile Convoy only has uh, five attack right now in the last lane. That's correct. He will be going for lethal on this first lane, barely getting okay. that 19, adding in the knife here on our girl, Debbie. So he's still got some mana, though. He can put uh, some no accidents, maybe, though, that uh, nice six damage in that last lane. I don't think he'll get the chance to use it. Uh, but he will put a little bit more money there just in case he lives, and we're going to see the first tower fall for our challenger. All right, slight mistake there. What was that? The Iron Fog Gold Mine would have been better used in this lane because you get the gold after the oh. lane is over, right? So that contributes to extra damage on your convoy at the last lane. That extra three gold equating to two damage. Now, one I know damage. it doesn't... It actually rounds down. It rounds down. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a lot. <laughs> But that extra one damage. Okay, everybody's dead. It ends uh, up being three attack because he gets six gold. So. All right, 29 damage on this tower. He's got plenty of time before the Ancient is dead. And in this lane, everybody dead. But Oh, and he got the proc. Oh, Not that no. it mattered. No. <laughs> you got Conflagration anyway. So you have Luna going against this convoy right now. Yep. With eight attack. We'll be killing her unless Lumi can do something. He does have... Some phase boots, perhaps, or he even does. the leather armor. He's gonna echo slam BM the, <laughs> the creep for some reason. Uh, can you explain that one for me? Uh, one damage, not really, no. Now, I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but that <laughs> echo slam on one damage. <laughs> I wish that voice line was in the game. Like, echo <laughs> slam? Echo slam? All right, so. Luna lives another day, and our boy here has 13 gold to try to find something to do. Lumi, however, cashing out, buying a lot of those Blade of the Vigils, and the oh-so-important... Oh, I know how he did it now. Daga, what's up? So he needed that one extra damage because the next turn, he's going to get Conflagration, which is two damage to the convoy, plus the, if there's no creep spawning, you'll get oh. a Lucid Beam killing it. Uh -oh. So actually very smart, but... Rix is back. Rix is going to go there, so it's a 50-50 chance. I like that thinking. Lumi always has a reason for why he does things. That's why he's one of the best guys to face here. So, this third lane, the Luna could hit the Lucen Beam on that convoy, killing it, or it could fall to the Ricks. It's a fitty fitty. Oh, that is a great card to get right now for our challenger. 12 damage on Bristle. Does he have anything it, to make this thing go all the way, Sunzi? Here's the thing, buddy. Yeah. The challenger has initiative. He has to keep it. He has to keep it. Which, there's no way for him to cast anything anyway. I mean, he could healing salve Bristleback. Just don't do that. Don't not don't right. heal him. <laughs> you can play the Thunderhide pack immediately in this last lane. And he could win. And we'll see. He could win. Oh, wait. No, no. The, oh, yeah. He already has an Ancient in lane one. Sunspan. A lot of it depends on the Lucent Beam. All right. And Arrows. Now, this guy might have the game if he just does not heal the enemy Bristleback. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the crowd waits with <laughs> gasps and holding their breath. Will he heal the enemy Bristleback or will he sit quietly until he wins the game? Let's find out. So, oh, he's gonna get two extra damage on the tower. Oh! He do anything more. So, the challenger has to win this round. Because if he doesn't, it. Bristleback will be able to siege no matter what, unless there's perhaps a coup de gras. That That's the one it. saving grace. Blink oh. dagger, oh no. 
All right, well, Blink Dagger gives two attack, but also allows you to do just this right there. Blink to another lane. So we're going to see that Earthshaker in now. Luckily for him, he does not have Fissure, so this damage is not going to get blocked. And we'll see if he does anything but put this uh, Thunder Hide. Oh, oh no. The Revtel Convoy. <laughs> no, Lord. So we are going to see that damage get blocked by that uh, nice Blink move by Luminous, making the Thunder Hide not hit the tower for 14. It will only hit for six. Yep, Thunder High comes out, so he still needs a little bit more damage. Won't be able to get it this round. Doesn't mean the game's over. We talked about Bristleback. All right, maybe the game's over. <laughs> Lucent Beam oh. absolutely destroys him. Not enough to kill the tower. He still has to do the damage in the first lane or the second to win this game. He, yep. he does have a chance. Good. Every single hero is coming back in the next yes. lane. It is do or die. A friend once told me that you know a game is good when one round makes the difference between victory and defeat, and here we are with two damage in the first Ooh, lane. Doggy. All oh right, boy. so here's the thing. You have to get coup de gras if you don't, the game is over, which means put one black hero probably in the first lane just to be able to cast it, Yeah. right? Middle lane, Lumi's pressuring here enough to perhaps kill the Ancient, not just the second tower. Here. Yeah. So you have to worry about that, maybe putting a couple heroes there. But again, there's some siege damage coming out from the time of Triumph. And then the th every lane is a disaster. Every lane is a disaster. very difficult. But if he does he get the still coup win, de gras, he can still win, yeah. He gets the coup de gras. It's a two cards. It's late in the game. He hasn't got him yet. If he gets that, oh, you've got to put a black hero in that first lane. If you don't, it's over, buddy. You, you don't have a choice. But he's deciding where to go right now. He's going to go for Ricks in the top lane. Not sure that's a good idea. I mean, literally, it's just you kill that guy or you die. I mean, that's it. Yes. You put a black hero there. Don't even worry. I don't know if you're listening to me over there. Black hero in lane one and move the Ricks. <laughs> don't. It, no, 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 he's, <laughs> lane one. <laughs> move lane the on. Ricks. Don't do it, brother. Oh, boy. Oh, okay, right. here we go. He hears us. There we go. Will it be a coup de gras? Okay. <laughs> Will it be a coup de gras? Can I get a little bit of rumbling from the chat here? The chat. Oh, yes. everybody, please, a drum roll for the coup de gras. Will he survive? There's a draw, Sunzi. I think he's cast, is it one or two? I think, I think he's, he's only cast, cast two. two. Only two. Pick off. There's only one more. Oh, yeah, that's a grunt. <laughs> and that is going to do it. Might as well just uh, no accident yourself till you die. The game is uh, now officially over. Uh, there is very little, if anything, our boy can yeah. do here. He but, does have uh, a lot of direct damage. The pickoff does four, no accident does three. He has two of those. But the problem is Bristol has six armor. Six Blocks armor. all of that. And he got it all from Time of Triumph. So, uh, again, a very powerful card that we see in lane for eight mana for the red squad so at this point he could just hit go and lose the game this is a pretty sweet item by the way we've seen it a couple times gives four attack plus when you use it gives regen based on half of your attack to both you and your neighbors it's super powerful unfortunately won't oh, be doing anything here the arrow too it doesn't heal towers which is what he really needs yes uh that is unfortunate but you might as well just activate it anyway why not have a little bit of fun he is going to go for a little bit of damage just to show that he's not giving up on this harsh world, that he's the harsh hand he's been dealt. No, that's good. Damn, he gets one more hit in Look before it's Look at the cleave, over. by the way, the from Bristol. Cleave. It is insane. He gets four cleave from Time of Triumph, yep. plus two from Blade of Vigil. So that ends up being his six instance attack onto PA from the side. Yikes. Well, trying to put out as much as we can here. He can still he's activate the windfall hammer. hammer. He is going to heal the Bristol back. Beautiful. Beautiful move there, sir. As he puts on the phase boots as well. And he's gonna TP PA out. She doesn't want to watch this. Nobody wants to watch this from Challenger's side. G -G. And there it is, GG. What a fun game to watch. Thank you guys so much. You really put up a heck of a fight against Lumi, sir. That was a complete blast. To